heating it up. Okay, so any food that you put on the plata, on the hot plate, before Shabbat, already has to be ready. The hot plate is for the purpose of it being heated up, not for it to be cooked. So even your chulint, let's say you make chamin. Chamin, usually the longer it cooks, the better it is. But even that chamin that you put, you can't put it completely raw five seconds before Shabbat, turn it on and it'll be ready by tomorrow at 12 o'clock. It already has to be at a point where it's edible. It's edible and before Shabbat. And in essence, all you're doing is just continuing to heat it up, but and it's making it more edible and more tasty. So if that steak was not edible already before Shabbat, you're not allowed to eat it. So you have to be very, very careful with stuff like that. The hot plate is not to cook your food. The hot plate is to heat your food. It's to heat your food. Now, when it comes to uh, specific things like uh, solids, there's a lot, it's a lot easier to heat and to not necessarily wait until it's completely done because if you cook it for too long, you're going to burn it and so on. The one issue that confuses a lot of people is soup, things that are liquid. You have to be very careful. If you have a soup that you've made already before Shabbat, it's ready before Shabbat. You put it on a hot plate, so into Shabbat it's already on a hot plate, right? That soup, once you take it off the hot plate, once you take it off, you serve everybody, you're not allowed to put it back on a hot plate for the rest of Shabbat. Because then you'll be actually with the water, because it's actually so much, the majority of it is liquid, you'll be recooking it. And that's forbidden. You're only allowed to leave it on the hot plate before, before Shabbat, leave it on the hot plate for as long as you want. But once you take it off, it has to stay off. So you have to know the Alachot Shabbat. Anyone that does not have a book in their house, a single book, there's a whole series of books. But I have a single book. It's in our Kiru package. Whoever doesn't have one, let me know. You can order it online. If you don't have any money, I'll just give it to you for free. Uh, but for anyone that needs to know Alachot Shabbat, just wait for me after the lecture. I have some books in my car. We'll give you a simple book. One simple book with all of the basic Alachot for Shabbat. Now, of course, Shabbat is an endless subject. You can learn from now until the end of the millennium, and it's still not finished. But there are basic day-to-day things you need to know. Like the ones we just explained. Why? Because what ends up happening is that if you know all the basics, for sure you're violating Shabbat. And not knowing is not an excuse in Shemaim. So you have to know it. I recommend, generally speaking, for people to learn Ilchot Shabbat from simple books. Simple books in the beginning. One book, or let's say if you're Sfaradi, Yalkut Yosef, it's three books, it's simple language. Don't learn Alachot Shabbat from the Shulchan Aruch on your own if you're just starting out. Why? You're not going to understand how to apply it. You have to learn this from simple books. I learned Alachot Shabbat in the beginning from a children's book. I've already said this several times in the, in the, in the past. I learned Alach, basic Alachot Shabbat from a children's book. It's called 39 Melachot of Shabbat or Sabbath. Written by Ashkenazim, Tamidei Chachamim, Tzadikim. That's how I learned in the beginning. Why? Because that's where I was. Now, if you think that you're better than I was, I promise you you're not. I promise you you're not. I'm human, you're human. I put my pants on one leg at a time, you put your pants on one leg at a time. But the people that have an ego, no, come on. I'm going to go straight to the source. I'm going to learn Alachot Shabbat from the Gemara Masechat Shabbat. Well, guess what? You're not going to learn from Masechat Shabbat because Masechat Shabbat in the beginning talks about Hanukkah. Hanukkah. Well, but it says Masechat Shabbat. Yeah, it says Masechat Shabbat. You learn about Shabbat, Masechat Shabbat. You learn about Shabbat, Masechat Abu Dazara, Masechat Sanedrin, Masechat Brachot, and many, many other Masechat. Masechat Moed Katan. You learn about Shabbat all over the world. That's why the Rambam did us a favor and took all of the rules, put it in the Mishneh Torah, put it in the Rambam, then Rabbi Yosef Karo, put it in the Shulchan Aruch, then the Chachamim, put it in their own different psaks in different places around the world, different poskim, different shelot that became relevant in a generation. And then the Chachamim, more recently, put it in the smaller, simpler books of what's relevant to you and your little iPhone. Now, unless you're spending your whole day at a, at a, at a kolel, and you're a talmit chacham, and you know Hebrew fluently, and you, you know what you're doing with the Gemara, you know what to do with the poskim, you know what you're doing, you need to learn from a basic book in the beginning. Why? You simply need to know yes, no. Yes, no. It's not for you to decide. Ah, you know what? I think what he means over here. No, it's not for you for what you think what he means. You're in first grade. Yes, no. Yes, no. For how long? Until you know all the yes, no's by heart. Until you can give a shoe about all the yes, no's, you do yes, no's. 
That's what you have to learn. Why? Because violating the yes no is much worse, much worse than you missing a chapter in the Shukhan Aruch because you weren't yes no. You have to know. Anyone who doesn't have it, I have some books in my car, give it to you for free.